All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker, and up on TSN 4. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. What a day we have in store. What a day we have in store with hockey going, baseball Kraken going. Kraken updates, live Kraken updates, yes, Hazy B. that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I need Kraken updates. I need everybody Kraken updates. It. Yeah, everybody needs a little Seattle Kraken in their life. Uh, St. Louis Blues, too. They That's might right. be a team. Uh, hey, they were bold over the summer. I've got two offer sheets that went through. Like, uh, you know, I, I had a St. Louis fan reach out to me the other day said, do you think they're a playoff team? And I was like, no, I don't. But I I, <laughs> I, 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 I felt bad. Like, I, <laughs> So you just went through that whole diatribe. Ah, they might be serious. My buddy called me and asked, are they a no. playoff team? And I said, no, they're not. Do you want the, the real true story is on my brother's birthday, they were having a time. And I get a message from my brother at midnight going, are you up? And I was laying there. I'm like, all right. He FaceTimed me with some of his buddies from the lake there. And one guy was in one. And he was like, the Blues, yeah, they're going to be. And I was like, nah, I don't think so. Not happening. <laughs> Put your drink down. I broke I broke his heart. I felt so bad. But I was like, I don't. I, I just said to him, I said, who's coming out? Right. Like, even if, like I said, the teams that seem to be solidified there, I don't think they got worse in the offseason. Anything, I did the same better. thing today on the driving range. Guy tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, how about my wings this year? I go. I don't see it, man. I don't. <laughs> he gave his Scott head down and keep walking. It is a heartbreaking realization because the is. guy. I think they assume you'll just be nice and say, "Yeah, I think so," man. Because you could say that about any team, short of maybe you know San Jose or something, where you just right. you can't even do it. And I, I think Sharks fans, if they're already in Toronto would be smart enough not to even ask you. It's it's more, do you think they'll take a big step? Do you think Celebrini's the right. real deal? You know, and, and then you can just give an easy and obvious and, you know, just comforting answer. Sure, yeah, it's going to be great. Great year, good stuff. Scram, see you later. But to yeah. just be so blunt, I appreciate that analysis. And, <laughs> okay, and I think you're me, accurate let, on both sides. Let me I take do. it to this, Hayes. For the last five years... On October 5th or 6th, the day before the season, a guy's tapped you on the shoulder on the range and said, what about those Leafs this year? Mm -hmm. what, are you, what, have, what have you been saying? I've been asked that 35 times in the last three or four days from friends, from people at the cores, from people walking around TSN. But has it changed well, since they got to be a quality team? No. Because I, I got to – let me tell you my little two Okay, you answer first. first. How do you answer that question? I first started when they got – like when Matthews was cooking and Marner and they all became good players, I'd be like – I was always like, they got as good a chance as anybody because these guys are really good and they're a good team. And then it's like – Losing the first round, losing the first round. Now I've just gotten to a point where people ask me, I'm like, it's really difficult well, for me to predict anything different than that's happened the last five years. I, you're right. It, it is hard. The one thing that I've struggled with because I've found, I've caught myself a few times is, and oh, I've heard, I've heard both of you guys say it, is it feels different. You know what I mean? Like, look different, feels different. And you're right. Like, there has been a new coach. I think the team looks. But we had, honest to God, we had this chat at the deadline and heading into the playoffs last year. It just seems different. This team seems different last year. And that's we had that a couple years in a row. I can't say that until they go out and show me. I'm sorry. I just can't do it because I agree. They do seem different. They do the, like it seems like they've had a little bit more need at the bottom of the lineup and there's a different mentality. Until you go show it, I can't back it because I've said it too many times. Yeah, it's so, the October trap. It's the same right. thing every single fan falls in every October. It is a rite of passage if you're a Leaf fan. A rite of passage. That you look at it and you start to come around. Because why Why would you want to be miserable all the time? right? I, I would love to see them win. I would love to see that happen for the fan base, for the city. It's, it's more deserved – than I think maybe any other fan base in North America. I, I really believe that because of how long it's been, how rabid this fan base is, how big the, the fan base is, how much it costs to go to games. Like there's so much that goes against this fan base, yet they keep coming back every single year. And I'd love to be in a position where I would, I could say, yes, I do believe this is the year, but we're all falling into the same category here because I do like where they're at. 
Like, I love where they're at in October, and I've loved the way they've been in right. October for the last eight years. I have no doubt that they're going to win a lot of games, rack up a lot of points, and maybe what is different this year, and maybe this is where the goalposts have to go, is not necessarily about analyzing the team, but pursuing a different spot in the standings than they have had at any point outside of that COVID bubble year, which was a completely unique throw it out. Doesn't matter year. Try to win the division. You know, I think that's gotta be the question first. Can they make the playoff scenario feel different? Yeah, Avoid Boston. If you can avoid Tampa, if you can yeah, avoid that's, Florida, that's just, if you can, they, that's, that's in their great, best interest I, it, in the first round. Dude, it completely is. It completely is. And you would be a moron not to think of that being a positive scenario. But I get nightmares of being in a playoff series where it's like, or a mini playoff series, whatever it was called, against the Blue Jackets. And it's like, this is the Blue Jackets. Take care of business, and then you're in the real deal. And they lost it. I understand that. Yeah. And, that's and then why... Montreal, same thing. It's like Montreal limped into the playoffs. Yes, they ultimately went to the Stanley Cup final, but you had them up three Cobb. Or 3-1, sorry. And somehow it didn't work out. I, I have horror stories. I just Everyone does. Everyone's and I'm like it. you. I want things to be different. I'd like, not just in my lifetime, like a Leafs fan always says, but while I'm in this industry, I would like to be a part of them doing something. You know what I mean? Like, I'd, I'd like to be at games well, and it would be, be outside. It yes. for us to have the show outside of Scotiabank in a cup final. That, that would be a dream scenario for this show. I'm sure I can speak for every show that operates out of this city. Um, it would be obviously incredible. But, you know, to answer the question, is it different? Obviously, there's different pieces. There's a different coach. There's a different goaltending scenario. You know, Wall yep. and Stolarts, you know, they're 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 big guys. If they're healthy, I think they could actually perform pretty well. And I think they could get like really good tandem goaltending this year. But right. ultimately it's still gonna come down to your best players dragging you to the finish line, and that's the one thing that hasn't changed. Yeah. You know, you can have different line mates up and down the left wing, right wing, you can have different deep pairings, you can have different goalies, different coaches, different GMs. Ultimately, what, what stops me is once you get to the playoffs, I'm still looking at the same five guys who are the most important players outside of the goalie, yeah. right? Like, no one is going to surpass Morgan Riley in terms of importance on the back end. I, Tanev's in a, a, a really good player, will, will settle in well. He's not your number one. He can't be. He's got to augment the number one. He's got to make sure he puts Riley or whoever he's playing with in a very good position to succeed. Nothing will change between now and the end of the year, that will push Matthews, Marner, Nylander out of the top three most important forwards. Tavares is likely there. Maybe he's not. You know, maybe someone passes him. Maybe Nyes right. is more of an impact player at that point. Maybe Domi in the playoffs can have more of an impact on the production of the team. I think that's up for debate. But Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Riley is not going to change. And it didn't change over the summer. So your number one for, uh, defenseman, your, number, your top three forwards have all been here for eight years. And they, yeah. they've all shown what they've shown. So that's always my answer. And But I think most Leaf fans are in the same position. Like, Leaf fans I talk to, they're like, yeah, me too. I like where they're at. They look like big boy hockey. It looks I like Barube here. They look like they've got some toughness. I think they're a veteran team that is going to mean some business. And I think it's going to be a fun year. But come the playoffs, that's just a separate conversation where they have to change their own reputation. Yeah. So, that's you know, we'll see what it's, and we'll see where it's at once we get there. We'll see what the trade deadline is brings on we'll, we'll see what right. other teams are doing and that's why i'm talking about the standings maybe they play a team that they match up really well against you know maybe you get home ice and you play a team that backdoored in and you actually lean on your experience and you get through and then all of a sudden you got mojo going that could happen but it's on them to do it like they got to have a great regular season and set the tone for what they're going to do differently come playoff time and 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 make no bones about it like I looked at all the teams last night, specific, specifically in the Atlantic. You know the team that I think people are sleeping on? Tampa. I, I think Tampa is – you get a healthy Vasilevsky mm -hmm. to start the season. I mean, that team has had two off-seasons of working hard. Like, their core isn't old. Uh, you know, you, you trade out Gensel for Stamkos. You could argue that might be an upgrade based on the age and versatility. I think Tampa actually could be – they could be better be than they were last year. That's what I think so, too. I, I agree. I, th I look at their depth. I don't know about that depth down there. Like, their bottom Point, point Sorelli, Paul, in the middle, 
And yeah. now you could trade Hedman. For, you remember, they got Moser. That J.J. Moser is a good defenseman. They mm-hmm. got him for Sergachev. And McDonough it's a downgrade and from Sergachev, though. Well, yeah, but Sergachev is really good. But Moser, Moser's a good player. Mm-hmm. And then you got McDonough and Chernak. Like, that's a top four. That's a good four. top that's four. A, it is a good top four. I, I wouldn't sleep on Tampa. That's I'm not sleeping on them. I'm not saying I'm sleeping on them. I don't think anyone yeah. should. They went to three cup finals. You know, they won two cups. But, but I think the, the key are, is the narr- Vasilevsky coming out of the I, gate and being I, an absolute monster. I just see the narrative going, well, Tampa's older and they're going to regress. I don't think so. I think it's the other way. I think they've retooled quietly. They've got younger players in there. The Hagels, the Pauls, guys like that. Sorelli's not old. You know, that's they've snuck in kind of like – you know, some quieter, like pretty good players that aren't old. Mm-hmm. That's that's why I'm, I'm saying, like I I've seen. So are you like, saying some, don't sleep on them to win the Stanley Cup? No, sl- don't sleep on them to win the division. That's okay. what I'm saying. Well, if you're going to win the division they, and it might be the best in the league, then it, they could win the cup, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The Rangers are damn good. I think Carolina's going to be good. Like there's, yeah. you know, there's an eight, like there's a six to eight pack out east. And there's probably a, a six pack out west too, with Colorado and mm-hmm. and Dallas and Edmonton. And I think Vancouver is going to be good. Like I I I, know. I agree with you. I think the Demko stuff is really scaring me, man. The fact it that does. he's out yeah. three to four weeks, and even that is not defined or written in stone. Hazy, think about that. Three to four weeks, and that was th- it was three to four weeks, like two weeks into the playoffs. So it's like. What are we three to four weeks from? Like, that's scary stuff. Possibly another three or four weeks. That's what we could be. It's scary because he's had an off season. Like, this isn't January where it's like, hey, three to four weeks and, you know, we're going to see it. Like, he's had a full off season where he missed the end of the season. And that was the same injury that he's trying to come back from. It's very scary. I would be very – but I still think Vancouver's a very good team. Even I agree. if that tandem can give them – like Lankin is a pretty good goaltender. Shilov proved that he's a good goaltender too. If they can just give them league average goaltending, that Vancouver team I think is really deep. I really agree, solid. but looking through the league, what is noticeable – and again, it speaks to where they're going and it's only going to get worse – is it really has – and maybe it's always been like this – but it's who are your six best forwards, who are your four best defensemen, or three best defensemen, and who's your starting goalie? Because, you know, I was looking at it, trying to think of where I'm going to go with, like, predictions. And I really like Dallas, and I'll use them as an example. I, they, they've yeah. been lurking for a while, and they're a really good team. And you look at – they got a, a top line right now. I think Johnston's playing on the right side, Hanson Robertson. That's that's a stacked top line. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you still got Sagan who can play. That Stan Coven kid's really good. Yeah. Um, you know, Matt Duchesne had a good year. Like, they've got a good mix, and they got a three-pack of defensemen. Heiskanen's a stud. Yeah. Harley's a good player. Lindell's a good player. But then they've got, like, Matt Dumba and Ilya Labushkin. And, like, you start looking at the rest of it, and you're like, man. Like, I really like them, and I think they could finish with 110, 112, 15 points maybe. Yet they are going to have – players you know five or six guys where you're like what are they bringing to the table dude you like, every the team's, team's got those yeah the yeah. every good team you look and they're like they want garbage dumpster hunting and they, every they team got, has to yes you have to because you pay yeah. your best yeah. players so much that's and, right yeah. you got to go dumpster diving with a team of scouts man and just get through the smell and the muck and <laughs> yeah, find right. something man you got to you got to yeah. reclamation yeah. projects like it's well, mandatory it, it, Washington, I just thought that I think signed that Verana kid who was there before, went to Detroit in the Mantha trade, and now they're just like, maybe this guy can come back and score 25 goals. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Liar. You're finding finding the Pacioretties of the world. You're finding guys that, you know, it's like, hey, think this guy might still have some game. I can plug and play at. What did Pacioretty sign for? I don't even remember. One, well, I was, was in the eights, but with bonuses, it'll be one point five. Let's call it, let's call it a million until he plays. Mm-hmm. Let, you know, let's say a million bucks. But that you, every team has to do that to find value at the bottom of your roster because the top of your roster, all the good teams, the top of your roster is getting paid. That's Just right. The, the question is, how many of them are there, and how much are they getting paid? And there's thirty two teams. Right? right. So if you get a, a really good player on the third line, once that guy's ready to be paid, he's leaving. You know, he's yeah. going somewhere else to get paid. Or you push out the older guy above you and or, find somebody to take his deal. Right. You know? 
Yeah, that's the that and that's the nature of the beast. And I get, that's pro sports, and that's the way it's been, you know, for a long time. Certainly in the salary cap era. But when you look at the the best teams, you know, the Edmontons and the the Dallases, even you know New York and Toronto, it's your depth is always going to be a challenge. You know, who's going to stay healthy? And who's going to get hot at the right time? Who's going to find a goalie or have a goalie that you know goes on some magical run? Yeah. And that's the beauty of the beginning of the season is you can really spin it so many different ways. Yeah. And um, that's why we get started. You know, we're just getting going. And the Leafs are playing tomorrow night. And Barube's already, I guess he's a Sheldon Keefe type with the starting goalies. I figured he would be one that would just tell people who's playing. I don't know why I had that What's impression What's his little Craig. answer for that? Come to morning skate? Yeah. We have the clip. You want to hear Craig? Yeah, today? let's like, hear it. I didn't Because they got a back-to-back. I think most people assume it'll be, you know, Wall and Stallarts are going to play one of yeah. each game, right? They're both going to get in the right. first couple of nights. It doesn't seem overly complicated. But here's Craig Barube on that earlier this morning. For the first start, was it an easy call to give it just to Joseph because he's? I, did I give it to somebody? Oh, I'm sorry, oh. he was talking like he was. I'm, well, <laughs> how, how, I never how? mentioned nothing, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> what, will you start Joseph tomorrow? <laughs> well, we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not jumping to conclusions or anything. I'm just we'll see tomorrow. That's tomorrow. <laughs> Today's today. <laughs> You've got to play the starting again. He's like, did I give it to somebody? Like, he yeah. actually, like, have you You guys are telling me who's starting? I have, you know, I'm the one who's going to play it again. I, honest to God, he's so funny. He it's is just maybe because like, I know him and played with him, but it, right. like, it's like, it's sarcastic. Like, did I give it to somebody already? But it's also with, like, a, a little bit of this guy could beat the hell out of you for asking you that question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like, I don't know if I need to ask this guy again because oh who knows what he might do in please, terms of please response. Please play just the beginning again. It's All right, so if we funny. have it, JP, you have it? play it. For the first start, was it an easy call to give it just to Joseph because he's? I, did come. I give it to somebody? Oh, I'm sorry, he oh. was talking like he was. I, well, <laughs> how, how, I never mentioned nothing, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> I whatever. didn't mention nothing, but whatever. <laughs> I honestly, that's one thing I have never really understood. Like, who cares? Like, I exactly. What? Yeah. I figured Barube would be a guy that would say, oh, yeah, Wall's going. Like, what, why does it matter? Well, like, he seems like that kind of, like, routine, I'll give you a blunt answer. Okay. And yet he's playing the same game that Sheldon it, played for years. Won't but tell anybody. Here's something that uh, I'll give something back here. What if you play Wall against New Jersey, the better team? See, that that might be the thought Possibly. process. Is goes yeah, I know, but Noodles, everyone in dangerous. the world is going to find that out tomorrow at 1030. The starter 100%. usually goes off the ice first, so it's like, what are we doing here? But it, what you do is that if, if, if you have that planned out, you're going to go Stolarz tomorrow against Montreal and Jersey back-to-back -back you want to give to Wall and then come back with him on the weekend. Like, that might be a scenario they're thinking about. I don't know. Again, I, I never liked that thinking because if the guys are tired, it's the beginning of the season and they play like crap and it's just like, what? Like just put your best team on the ice for the first game and then just and, roll the dice. And, if and you're good I do enough, believe you can... they will do that. But they I'm should just saying they might, they might not. Like, I they might doubt go... it. I mean, Masters asked as if he had already spoken with Wall and Wall's telling people he's starting. Yeah, you know, like that. I think Barube's answer was more. May he may go to Wall and say, "Don't give any indications in the future. I don't want anybody knowing." You know, if he's a believer in that, and he's not alone. A lot of coaches do that. Um, I'm just, I'm with O. Like by tomorrow morning, you're gonna know whoever's in the starters net, whoever's going out there, whoever's whoever has a day of a start routine and yeah. is implementing that. The reporters pick up on it. And they know, and I would go with Wall tomorrow. Stolarts on Thursday. And I think that's a legit battle. You know, I, I think they want Wall to be the guy because they've committed to him. You yeah. know, they've already given him a three-year deal. I think they believe in his talents and he's homegrown. And we have talked about this endlessly for a decade, how they're, it's long overdue for them to have a homegrown goaltender that turns into a star, you know, as a guy that they can trust and, and build around. And that's a core piece that really hasn't been a part of it at any point in the Matthews, Marner, Nylander era. Like, Freddie was a core piece when he first arrived, and his first few years were very positive years. He, he played really well, and he was pretty good in the playoffs. There were some moments, obviously, that got away from him, like the rest of the team. But since then, it's been, you know, the Samsonovs and the Jack Campbells and all these different goalies have kind of come and gone, and it's been an afterthought position. 
And a lot of the core four stuff is relatable to the salary cap and how much money they're making. And Joseph Wall is not going to make nearly as much money right. as any of those guys. But if he can solidify himself this year as a, a core piece, like a building block of the organization, that's probably the most likely thing that can change the whole operation and the whole complexion and all of the results, quite frankly, because he's actually playing. And he can do something that no other player actually can do. He can single-handedly win. Like, goalies yeah. can literally do that. It's very difficult to do. I think it's impossible to win a cup like that. But you can literally win a series because the guy is just that insanely good. hot Look at the first times. two games in Florida last year. You know, I think that Edmonton kind of – the win meter or That's deserved right. to win meter was That's on right. Edmonton's Game side in for Bob. Sure. Bob game stood one. on his head. Bob stood on yeah. his head game one and two, and they came out of that two no, up to nothing, and maybe they shouldn't have. That's what we're talking about, what a difference it could be. Exactly, and that's probably the answer right there is, do I think Matthews will be that different in the playoffs? I hope, but I don't know. But can Joseph Wall be that big of a difference? Yeah, I guess he, he probably can. Like It's more likely that he is a difference maker than any of the individual core players, wow. the goaltender. I think I think their power play, their scoring, like they it's not like they were losing five one in these games. They're losing two sure. one and stuff. Like sure. I I think it's it's I think they go hand in hand and, and maybe the goaltender getting a shutout, but it, you could argue that the Leafs are a high scoring team and then it dries up in the playoffs and that's not on the goalie. Like the goalie No, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not saying the goaltender's been the reason they haven't been winning. Right. What what I'm saying is it is the it is the unique position that can change things yeah. even if the other guys aren't scoring. Like, technically, you can win one nothing. It's not right. – it's a horrible strategy, and it's not one that anyone would suggest you should try. Right. But Swayman gave up one in game yeah. seven. The Bruins weren't scoring five, six a night. Swayman just said, you're not scoring on me. It's that right. simple. You can have one. That's all you're getting. Yeah. Samson I gave up two. Bruins moved on. Yeah, you know, I well, mean, you, you I don't know. Maybe can't... Wall, if he's playing and plays well, they win one nothing that game. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that Lindholm goal was a terrible goal, awful goal. Yeah. Anyway, why are we bringing that up? We're, we're moving on. We're moving <laughs> it's on. A to new the next year. Season. It's a new start. Fresh the start. New year. New start. Yeah. And Utah's in action tonight. I guess right away uh, in five minutes or eight minutes from now. No, that's we'll Seattle. Watching. Utah's playing tonight. Oh, sorry, tonight. Utah. That's right. Yeah, see, you can't. You now you're getting mixed up. Seattle's a I grizzled Seattle. veteran team, man. They're they're not an expansion team anymore. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yes, Seattle's, old, Seattle's grizzled. Um, uh, all right, role play. No, what do we have? Confirm or deny coming up today. I have to tell you about something I did last night. I think both of you are going to be very disappointed oh, in no. my actions, but I'll tell you about it and I'll explain why it happened. And confirm or deny coming up. We'll get into the Monday nighter last night. Al's brother was absolutely spot on with his analysis oh. in the hallway and in the studio last night. And um, <laughs> you guys are in trouble. I mean, let's call it what it is. It was a bad week, right? Yeah. You get we got away you from our smack. we got away from our core values yesterday. It was just like, you know, I've talked about it numerous times. You can break everything down, but sometimes you just have to look big picture and say, "It's Mahomes. It's mm -hmm. Monday night, and that's what it is." Yep. That's, that's right. That's what it was. That's too. what it was. Chiefs now 5 and 0. 5 and 0 and I don't even know if they've played 8 out of 10 football by their standards, 7 of 10. You know what I mean? Like what do they got? 4 star football, 3 3 star football for them. It feels like there's more there to give and they're 5 and 0. That's terrifying it for is. everyone else in the NFL. So we'll get into that and chaos has hit the Jets. We <laughs> called it. It took us one day to see it. Volcano. Crazy. The yeah. volcano was hitting the New York Jets. <laughs> we'll get into Robert Sala being let go earlier today and everything that came with it. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. I can neither confirm or deny that, uh, that this is in fact a segment. Austin trades Andrew Raycroft to Toronto in exchange for the rights to Tuka Rask. It's been my honor and a privilege to serve as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club. It's time for confirm or deny. Do you regret uh, giving all those gentlemen the no trades or no movement clauses? I, I, I can neither confirm or deny that. I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> All right, confirm and deny brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln. Ford employee pricing is back and you pay what Ford employees pay on most new 2024 
Ford vehicles. Limited time only. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com today. Okay, looking at uh, a little confirm or deny here. We know the way this works. Statements are made. We either confirm them or we deny them. Very, very simple stuff. Let's begin with uh, an Austin Matthews-related confirm or deny. Confirm or deny, Austin Matthews will be the captain of Team USA at the Olympic Games in 2026. Uh, can I just – can you give me two other – The Kachuks will be there. Um, I think it's him. I think it's 100%. I'll 100% confirm that because – Although Matthew Kachuk is a Stanley Cup winner, Brady Kachuk is a captain. I, I don't know. Hughes. Quinn Hughes, yeah. Quinn Hughes is a captain. I Jack just think Hughes he kind of has cup, that. You never know. Yeah. I, he, I, he's got that alpha dog type thing to him where it's like he's the guy. And I think all of his teammates, including all those gentlemen I just mentioned, would also support the idea and welcome the idea. Okay. Uh... I don't know. What is what is it? Confirm or deny? It's <laughs> yes, Fergie. It's I, confirm I, or deny. Well, he said 100%. There was a percentage in there. I'm I like, hear I you, but it's I just Tuesday. This guy's blending these things. 100% confirm. It's a confirm <laughs> With a way. pine on the patio. 100% confirm with a pine on the patio. Yeah, I could see it, but I, I'm going to play the field. Yeah. I think there's just a lot of a lot of great players. And, again, the, these guys might have success leading up to that. So you mentioned the Kachucks, Jack Hughes, Quinn Hughes, all of these guys. Although Austin might be. Austin yeah. could, too. You're excluding, yeah. you're excluding no, the you're right. Like I, I, Yeah, I'm just saying. But I also, uh, yeah, I'm right. denying it. Deny I'm playing it. the field. Deny it. I, don't think there, I can't think of a veteran that will be there. I don't think Patrick Kane's still there. Like, I think he's played himself out, right? And Kane's never been a captain, but, you, like, you put a Patrick Kane in the room, that's the guy that everyone will gravitate yeah. to. But I don't think he'll be there in 26. Um, you know, there's some great defensemen, like, you know, McAvoy will be there, Adam Fox will be there. But I'm, I'm going to confirm it, too, because I, I do think he, he is the best American. Like, there's, there's other great Americans, clearly, but it does seem like he's, he's the man. Now – you know, maybe it should be Matthew Kachuk, but I feel like him and his brother almost cancel each other out in a way. Jack Hughes isn't there yet. Like, he is not on the level of Austin Matthews. Um, and, you know, Jack Eichel will be on that team. There's some really good players on Quinn that team. Quinn Hughes is a captain. Quinn Hughes is a captain, absolutely. He's quiet, reserved. But, yeah. you know, that'll be interesting if his two brothers are on the team. You know, it could be a, the Hughes brothers could kind of run that room. But I'll confirm it because, I again, I think now he's taking that step with the Leafs. You know, and that's another thing. You're the captain of the Leafs. Like a- anything you could ever handle as a captain, he's going to learn in the next year and a half. You know, and Quinn Hughes has to deal with it in Vancouver, but right. a lot of these other, like Matthew Kachuk, there's like two reporters down there in Florida. You know, and you, you, not that he couldn't handle it, but this will be. Uh, Don't you it, think it's tied to success though? If the Leafs lose in the first round, or is it just best player? You well, know what I mean, if it's best player. Great. That's a if good question. I mean, I, I think that's a reasonable question. But he, you know, he's your, he's going to be the best player, I believe. Um, does McDavid have to win a cup before he's captain for Canada, or what happens there? I no, I would think he, would, you know, he's the best player in the world. So I, I think he's. I don't know. even think he's going to be the captain. I think Sidney Crosby might be Sid. Be the yeah, captain. I was just going to say it might be Sid though if Sid's there. I would give I it think... to Sid personally. I, I think yeah. that it makes it easier for everybody. Let Sid take it all on. But and my logic probably... there is that if Matthews has to win, then does McDavid have to win? I mean, I know he's won more in the playoffs. but Well, he's been to a final. He hasn't won one round in nine years. That's my <laughs> right. point. Okay. And scored one goal in his last ten playoff games. Like... All right, so you're out on Matthews as the captain. I'm you not out him on him. A. I'm just giving It sounds like you wouldn't even give him an A. Yeah, I, I would have him on the bench. No, I'm joking. I, I would definitely – I think he would be Reasonable the best player. Reasonable criticism. I mean, he's got to own it. I'm uh, I'm not arguing against the fact that he hasn't won anything. If that's the argument, then that's a sound one. I still think he's probably going to get it. Yeah. But what it's I'm saying is – It's not even an argument. It's a fa- they're facts. Yeah, he hasn't won anything. Yeah. That's, uh, right. Of course not. But, that's, but I'm asking, like, where do you draw the line on having – like, does McDavid count as a winner? Is Dreisaitl a winner? Or do they have to win before they're actually winners? Yeah. No, that's a good point. I don't know. I I think it's I think Matthews will get it, but I think there's other guys. My I point totally is, agree is with that. Other guys who've gone deep in the playoffs. That's yes. my point. Yes, one hundred percent for sure. Uh, all right, confirm or deny. 
Mitch Marner will lead the Leafs in points this season. Totally confirm it. Uh, he, doesn't he do it every year? No. Doesn't the guy, Matthews, Matthews has done it the last couple six points years. last year, yeah. But Austin that's at 106. With, that's with yeah. Mitchie having some injury stuff. Yep. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's typically their point leader, so I will totally confirm. I think he's going to have a big year, and I – I'm tired of answering that question, too, when I could leave my house. It's like, I got nothing against Mitch Marner. He's one of the best players in the world. Him, like all of them, got to be better in the playoffs and do something. And I think he's going to have a great year. I think he's put it behind him, all the nonsense, the talk, whatever. I think he's poised to have a big year. I'm denying it because I think Matthews does. Like I, I think Matthews had 106 points last year. Yes, he had 69 tucks. But what if he gets... 60 tucks this year but that just means his line mates will have more points like i think i think i've also am on record saying that marner is going to have a, a monster start like it's going to be he might have the Will, william nylander year where it was like he was on pace for 100 and was it at one point william nylander on pace for 126 points yeah and he ended up with what 96 98 or i think it was 98 like that's but I, I would I chat my ass, man, getting 98 points. Like, well, neither well, one like, of those guys have gotten 100 yet, but right. they've I always know. been on pace to get 100. It just injuries. Like with Mitch, it's been injuries. Because if, if Mitch plays 82 games, he gets 100 points. That's what I believe. And I think if, if Willie just doesn't have a, a stretch where he goes three points in 12 games, he'll – he'll get to 100, too. But I still think it's Austin. I think I Austin's a, a point producer. Yeah, I'm denying this as well. I think Austin is uh, is going to have a monster year as well. I mean, I, I think Mitch will. I think Willie will. I think the three of them will. Like, the three of them are they're 27, 28 years old. Like, this is a wheelhouse of no one scares you during the regular season. Nothing's going to throw you off. You know, if you're healthy, if you're prepared, then they – should put up monster numbers. And if Matthews and Marner stick together all year, then that's going to prop a lot of these numbers up as well. But I think I think Austin's in the driver's seat in terms of point production, and it's close. Um, but I'll, I'll say I'll say Austin, so I'll deny that. Uh, confirm or deny, Bobby McMahon will play in at least 50 games this season for the Leafs. 50 I, plus for confirm, Bobby McMahon. Confirm. Everyone's kind of, I think, soured on this guy a little bit. Was he dialed in and lights out in training camp? No, he was not. He was also injured in training camp, too, wasn't he? Um, I, I don't, don't think he was. Th- I don't think he I mean, was. he might have been banged up. At, banged up a little bit. I, I, I just believe in the ability for him to be an effective player. Like, I don't. He might not play. To, I don't know if he plays tomorrow night, but I just don't consider him a guy. Just how big and strong he is and physical, I, I don't consider him a guy that would need to be fighting for a roster spot. Not everyone has to compete for a roster spot, but I have him as an NHL player. I don't really have him in a position to be missing games. I just like the, I like what he brings to the table. I did last year anyway. Yeah, I mean, last year he came from out of nowhere, really. Scored 15 goals in 56 games. You know, and if I think he would have been an impact player in the playoffs had he been healthy, unfortunately, because his style of play... I just think he's in one just with the the rotating kind of depth they have. Now, injuries can, can place that. I still think, yeah. what was it, 50? I think He needs gonna, to play a stretch of games where he shows Craig Berube that he is not in that mix of the numbers game. Like, what he doesn't want to get lost. Yeah, like, I'm going to show you my best and bring it every night, and then I'm not in the numbers game. But, That's for somebody else. But here, here, let me paint a picture for you. The only thing, then, this is where I think Hayes is going is if Nick Robertson hits the ground running and then Yarn Krull comes back into the lineup, I don't think it, it – maybe you know, somebody else has to come out. Mm-hmm. And then now it's musical chairs, but, you know, McMahon might have to wait, a, a, you know, an injury or two to make it in type of thing before he gets his shot. Okay, I think well, Kelly Yarncroft, I don't think he, he's, he's not uh, God's gift. So if he's going Understood. back in the lineup, he should be have, he should be told, too, uh, you're, you're a veteran player, but you need to show something to stay in the lineup, too. You're not owed or, like, that yeah. spot's not – you don't own that spot. You no. need to play well to stay in the lineup. You're at that point. Absolutely. And, I, again, as we've always said, the best ability is availability. you got to prove you can even play for me. <laughs> no yeah. kidding. That's, Yarncroft's always hurt. Like well, that, that at some point should hurt your status on the depth chart. Like if I can't trust you're going to play, 
I'm right. going to have to find someone else that I can trust will play. Let me ask you, though, is do you – like, Jorn Kroke is more a right winger center type of – I don't think – he does he play – has he ever played left? Like, McMahon is a left winger, yes. right? He doesn't play – I don't remember McMahon playing on the right side. Now, he might have to to get into the lineup if there's – like, Nick Robertson, by all accounts, might start on the right side, right? Like, yep. he's going to play – that's a lefty on the right side. McMahon have, might have to do that, too, if that left spot is Nice, Domi, Pacioretty, Lorenz. Now, Lorenz isn't a lock to no, play No, and that's the whole either, thing. Right? Like this, this happens every year. You look at the lineup opening night, and you just you project, oh, that's a good lineup. Right. That's pro- Never works that way. Like, You're Steven right. Lorenz was on a PTO, and he signed for 800 grand. He is – I think Bobby McMahon is a better player than him right now. Like, he has to prove that when he gets into the lineup. And I understand why Lorenz is on that fourth line, and they like him, and they like what he brings. And he can take some draws. And, you know, there's a number of different things that I think he can bring that that they like for seven or eight to ten minutes a night. But if it's Lorenz, Robertson, Pacioretty, maybe Reeves at some point is going to come out. Like, you got four opportunities to take a spot. Yeah, I think he gets. And I think he can do that. I, I'm going to confirm it. I, I, yeah. I think he's just he's he's got to. This is a little. I don't think this is a bad play. You got to spark him a little bit. You know, you got your contract. You got a taste of the NHL. You got to you got to hold on to it though. That's you know? a solid point. But I, yeah, I honestly, after watching him last year, I never thought that uh, that we'd be in this position where we're discussing what, how many games. I thought I liked it was him like, a lot down the stretch. He was a really impactful player. Really, like, really good really. player. Uh, confirm or deny, if Thatcher Demko does not return to 100% health, the Canucks are in danger of missing the playoffs. Do you I'm, I'm going to deny I, it. I'm, go, okay. go ahead, O. Go no, ahead. I want to hear you first, and then Let's I'm going to come off the top turnbuckle. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deny it because I think their goaltending just has to be good. They, they're not a team that relies on their goaltender to win. The, they're not Winnipeg. They're not like they're not a team that is their goaltender's front and center. He has been a great compliment. But I look at the depth of Vancouver Canucks. If they if that goaltending tandem of Lankinen and Shelov, who played well in the playoffs, again, it's only a small sample size. But if they can just be good, don't have to be great, just be good, I don't think Vancouver will be in danger of missing the playoffs. Keep in mind that division as well. Like I, I think Vancouver's good enough that they will be able to stay ahead of certain teams that are there. I got to deny it because we don't know what those two are as a tandem. That's the unknown. They could be a mess back there, and if they are, we saw what the Oilers went through last year with Jack Campbell and Skinner wasn't playing well. They couldn't get a save, and they had the worst record in the league. So if they're waiting for Demko, and that is a scenario, you're screwed. I don't care how good your team is. If you can't get saves in that league, you're screwed. And I don't want to look at it like that. I'm just saying that's out there. Yeah, well, and that's in the question, like in danger. It's not saying you're going to, but that, that's why I would I would confirm. Then it I'm as confirming well. danger. Yeah, I'm, I'm confirming, confirming danger. danger as well because you know I, I like their team. To, I mean, they had a great year last year, and they just ran right. into injuries. They could have got Edmonton. The they pushed Edmonton. They to won the seven. division. Absolutely, yeah. and like ran away with the division in many ways. Right. And um, I think Patterson gets back at it. I think he'll he'll have a great year. You know, they, we don't have to go down their whole roster, but they they got a good team. Well, like, they, they added really Debrusque and Sprung. Like there's some That's good right. players there. Like That's right. I, but I just Joshua's would... starting obviously on the IR, and it, like Demko's yeah. a big piece, man. Like a goalie, a start, a number one goalie. Like this is troublesome what he's going through right now, and it just it's not. It wouldn't be shocking as O just said. You paint the picture of what Jersey went through last year. If you have two goalies, Ottawa, like if you have goalies that are, that just can't get you saved, it's so demoralizing. And maybe they can. Like you would know right. better than us, Noodles, who these guys are. And Shelovs look good. Like he looked very well, good. Well, and, and here's the thing. Like you, we're putting a lot of trust. Like I'll just bring it closer to home. Uh, Joseph Walls played 30 games in the league. Mm-hmm. Like do you trust that uh, him and Stolars like that? If like they if struggle, mess, the Leafs are in danger. But that a danger of missing the playoffs? I think they would be if you get brutal goaltending. Like if like, we're, if they're if they're like brutal bottom, goaltending sinks any well, shit. It puts ask you the in New danger, Jersey Devils. Noodles. You're right. You got actually. You know what? To counter my own argument, ask the New Jersey Devils. Exactly. Last exactly. Year. Like, but but that being said, you brought up Edmonton. They ended up with a hundred and some points by the end of the year once they got their act together and mm-hmm. got saves. But it, I just think that. 
if that's why I kept saying, if they give you just solid goaltending, league average, just solid, the teams are, that are in front of them are good enough. That those those particular organizations we're talking about, especially Vancouver, mm-hmm. they're not. They don't rely on the goaltender for wins every night. Where that I hear see other org- That was kind of my. And I agree with that. You you tell me they get the. 16th best goaltending in the league, they're in the playoffs. Yeah, 100%. I, but if they get to 28th, they're in big trouble. Now you're in one. And, that's what, and the same thing with the Leafs. Yeah, same well, thing with the Ottawa, Oilers. Like you, every team. You guys pointed to Ottawa and Jersey, or, or O brought it up. Yeah. Those are good points. You can't argue against it. If you can't get a save, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. Because you don't trouble. know what's going on. You're in big trouble. Uh, confirm with deny. Brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford. Lincoln Ford employee pricing is back. You pay what Ford employees pay on most new 2024 Ford vehicles. Limited time only. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com today. Confirm with the night continuing in about an hour. Got a ton of them leading up to the start of the year. We love it. Love it. it. And um, chaos down in New York. Chaos in New York. We'll get into it. Mike Johnson will join us. Opening day, night in the NHL. Darren Pang coming up. Leafs Habs tomorrow night. Then the Leafs are in Jersey to play Sheldon Keefe and the Devils on Thursday. Big week forthcoming overdrive continues tsn 1050 and on the tsn app all right mike johnson coming up in about 15 minutes on the nhl starting today tonight leafs in action in montreal tomorrow then in new jersey on thursday confirm with the night continuing we got a couple of ball games in the nlds see if anyone throws a baseball into the other team's dugout tonight <laughs> the old manny machado why are they so mad about that well it's obviously against the grain but it's like did it hurt somebody or didn't touch anybody dave roberts had no idea it happened like if you right. watch the video he's he's looking down on his sheet or whatever he had no but did idea he get machado. sucked into the vortex and he's really pissed now yes so yeah. here here's a fan's it is weird that Machado like would would throw the ball into their dugout. I guess that rapidly, and that's Teoscar Hernandez, who he's you know top step Teoscar there, and he's yelling and screaming at <laughs> M- Manny, step. and you know they don't like each other, and I get it. But Dave Roberts watching that video like we just did had no idea the ball was thrown in. Like that's him with his head down on the top step. He has no idea that Machado it, threw the ball. And it kind of rolled in. Like it didn't. Like he didn't wire it at ninety-eight miles an hour no. in at somebody's melon. Like he threw it in that. Uh, direction. And it, you know what? And it, it, take it, take it, and run with it. Because in a game where there's not a ton of animosity unless someone gets thrown at, if this is what the Dodgers need to get pissed off at Manny Machado and the Padres. I'll tell you what. It seems like Machado and Fernando Tatis Jr. They go. They're on fire in the playoffs. They always hit bombs. They don't ever win, but man, they they're entertaining. They yeah, get they paid are. too, right? Those two oh, get paid. Oh, yes, they going. get paid. Do you want to hear Dave Roberts talking <laughs> yeah. on it again? Because he had no he had no idea <laughs> no. what was going. He looked yeah. up. He's like, "What are you so mad about, Teo Oscar?" He had no clue. Yeah. Here's what Dave Roberts had to say. I didn't notice it at the time. I really didn't. Um, I didn't notice it. Um, I did see the video, and um, it was uh, it was unsettling. Um, obviously, I have a relationship with Manny from from years past. Um, there was intent behind it. Um, it didn't almost hit me because there was a net, um, and that was very bothersome. Um, it's it's uh, if it was intended at me, I'd be very. Um, it's 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 pretty disrespectful. Um, so I don't know his intent. I don't want to speak for him, but I did see the video, and the ball was directed at me with some something behind it. What are you talking <laughs> about, Davy boy? It shriveled into the I know. dugout. It's unsettling. unsettling. <laughs> it hit the ground just after the third baseline. Yeah. Like, am I missing something with you this? You would think yeah. he saw a video of Manny Machado scissor kicking him and missing it by a millimeter. Yeah, yeah. right over his head. Like <laughs> right over his head. And, like he, he listen. He threw the ball. It is not the play that you're generally supposed to do right everyone's warming up in between innings and all that generally you throw it to a fan or you maybe back to your own dugout or dribble it in or whatever but i just don't believe for a second he was throwing that at dave roberts (laughs) what is he talking about it it hit the mesh like i don't understand like unsettling very unsettling i couldn't sleep last night my children are nervous to be at the park (laughs) It's just very unsettling stuff. Yeah, but they're looking for something. You're looking yeah, for bulletin are. board material. They got pumped in game two. Now they're going back to San Diego. Pumped. Yeah. yeah. 
It's going to be good tonight, man. Like the Mets and Phillies, because you know Philly fans are going there to disturb stuff. Like oh, there's yeah, going to be fights time. and stuff, which is ludicrous, ludicrous but it's going to happen. And, um, you know, what a night if you're a Kansas City fan. The Chiefs I, won and the Royals won last night. I was just going to say, you know, what Incredible. about your boy Kelsey? Like, I mean, yeah, he seemed to be having fun. He looked good Look Looked good, night, man. You know? Like, he's running options out of the backfield. And, like, I that know. little toss to Worthy was a great play. And Taylor showed up last night. So, there you go. Taylor Swift was back in attendance. and they're Back together, I guess. I guess, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're back together in the end. So yeah, He looked good, though. Like, I don't know. It, it, they're 5-0, and oh, like you said, Hayes, and they barely scratched the surface. What if, is there any chance they get a receiver? Is there any? I don't know, think Adams will go there you don't because think Adams Mark will? Davis just won't do it. You know, he's not he's not going to trade him within the division. But I wouldn't be shocked if they acquired someone before the deadline, and I, I don't know who that is, but I think they'll get some help. I could see them getting some help, and that Xavier Worthy looks really, really good. Like he's a weapon for them. So you yeah. get Pacheco back, you get Kelsey, you get Worthy, and that's probably enough with Mahomes. That offensive line is stacked. Like they are, they are a a bullying football team. That's what yeah. gets lost here. You look at Mahomes and Kelsey and Taylor Swift and all that kind of stuff. That team beats up the opponent. They beat them up, and there's also a psychological hold that they have on every opponent. Unlike yeah. may, maybe any other team in sports right now, where you play them, you make a mistake and you go down seven nothing. You have to be thinking we're done. Well, on the flip side of that, I also think it forces how good Mahomes is. I think it forces a quarterback like David Carr last night to do stupid things because he's like, I got to make something happen against this guy because he's just going to score the football. And you saw some of those stupid passes where it was like, what are you thinking? But he's probably thinking, i got to make something happen. That's right. Yeah. Because you're playing against a stout defense yes. and Mahomes. Yes. It, it's, it is really tough for any quarterback. Uh, hour two coming up. Mike Johnson, confirm or deny, continues. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.